Hello and welcome to another one of QuickSite.com's tutorial series. In this tutorial we are going to go over how to make web pages. As always begin by typing administrator after the main path to your website. Log in through your username and password. In a previous tutorial I uh, stressed the importance of creating sections and categories first before you actually get into making web pages which is handled here in your article manager. So assuming that you have organized your sections and categories as you see fit, then it's time to go into your article manager. But real quick before we do that, I'm going to go into my global configuration and make sure in this example and for this tutorial that my default what you see is what you get as editor, WYSIWYG editor, is set to the tiny MCE 2.0. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to go into my article manager. Your article manager will show in a list the articles you have with other columns to help you organize the content, which can be organized by clicking the top of the column into either ascending or descending order. And you'll notice, as in the previous tutorial, going over the sections and categories. Um, again, basically sections can be looked at like file cabinets and categories like drawers within the file cabinet. And these are the individual pieces of paper, the actual web pages themselves. And in this example, we have mission statement about services and home. Let's create a new web page or a new article. And you'll notice that right here you have got similar icons and buttons that you might see in Word or an HTML editor. That is again because I came over to the site and turned my tiny MCE 2.0 editor on in the global configuration setting so I could have the benefits of these um, WYSIWYG editor buttons and features. But uh, basically you're going to have the title of your page. We'll call it New Page. It's going to ask if it's published. Yes. Again, the alias is the same as the title, lowercase, no space. And it's going to ask you if you want it to go on the front page. Now, again, in the first tutorial, it kind of I talk about this, that this is a large area for confusion because a lot of people get confused and think that front page has to do with the first page that people and users see their site with. And that is not the case. Front page is simply the name of a tool. And the best way to look at that is we analogized sections in categories like file cabinets and the drawers within file cabinets, um, front page is best viewed as a whole separate file cabinet that's got some special features and functionality to it. So if you were to click yes here, basically what you're going to be telling your platform to do is that when you save this page, um, whatever the content is, it's actually going to file it in two places. One is going to be in the section and the category that you specify, and also it will save it in the front page tool. This is also why you want to create your sections and categories first before you actually begin creating your web pages because it's going to ask you when you create every web page which section and category do you want to file it away in and of course do I want to file it in the front page tool. Uh, for this example I'm going to click no and I'm going to go to my section and there's general content and the category there's only one underneath of it. Now the nice thing about this is the category field will automatically populate the drop-down box with the available categories within that section. So in essence I'm telling the platform that the page I'm going to make here I want to file inside the drawer category or the, uh, I'm sorry, the category web pages which is synonymous to a file cabinet drawer within a file cabinet called general content. And uh, down here we can create content here in subsequent tutorials we'll go over how to add pictures and other elements into this area but uh, some other things to bring out in this tutorial um, are some parameters that you have available to you one nice thing is that each web page uh, the start publishing date and the created date are going to be filled in by default for you for the day you created it but you can in the start publishing field select this calendar icon and choose a future date for this page to be published. You can also go to the finished publishing, by default it's never, and select a date in the future that when that date hits this page will be taken offline. 
This might be used if you've got a sale or a special that you're only running for a limited time and you want to make sure that you don't overextend the offer. We're going to skip parameters for the time being and jump down to the metadata information. Now again, in your global configuration settings, you have a description and keywords that pertain to your entire site. But this is where you get the opportunity to actually give a description and define keywords specific to the content of this page. And you also have a robots and an author box, which helps input that code into the metadata information of the page that you're creating. So description here. and meta keywords and key phrases there and then for the author I typically just put the site name and you would hit save and you'll notice the new page now appears in your article manager now I want to draw your attention up to this parameters here basically anything you set in this parameters box is going to pertain to all the articles within your article manager so let's take a look at some of the options we have there Whoops. The global configuration for your articles are here and they're basically controlled by simple radio buttons. For example, icons, PDF icon, print icon, email icon, the number of hits. Do you want to show the author name, create date and time? Do you want to show the modified date and time? And it's either show or hide. I have all these set up for hide right now, um, but you certainly have these options. And again, anything you do here applies to the entire list. Now a way you can go into any individual page and overwrite the information in the parameters box here is in that parameters section that we went over earlier or that we skipped earlier, excuse me. And basically all these drop downs here mimic those radio buttons that you had in your global configuration for your articles. Um, but let's say that your global configuration says to show the title. Well, if you use the global, then it's going to show the title. However, let's say for whatever reason you don't want this page to show its title. You'd simply click No there, and anything you do here overrides anything that you specify here. And that's where parameters come into play. You'll also notice there's a convenient hit counter to give you an idea of how many times that page has been accessed, the date it was created, and the author of the page. Now again, if you have a business model that's going to call for um, several people to be um, submitting and publishing content, this will come in handy here. But at this stage, the main thing to not worry about is how you're going to get those pages to show on the front end or for your users. That's going to come later. Um, right now, the um, time you should be taking and the actions you should be taking is simply populating this list with all the pages that your site will require, whether it's an about page, a services page, um, any, any content that you're going to have and want to convey to users, um, you're going to want to create a new page and place it in here. And that is going to conclude the tutorial on your article manager.